Thelacanth asks, is positive zero and negative zero, are they the same value? This is an extension of the question, is 0 0.9 repeating equal to 1? If we subtract, or first of all, if I subtract 1 from each of these, 1, what do we get? We would get, basically I think we get what he's saying here, uh, negative 0 and positive 0. Except uh, we know that subtracting 1 from both sides does the same thing. But do we get a distinct thing here uh, on the subtraction? If, I would say, if these two things can be considered different, then these things can, or would be considered different too. Now one thing we have established is there is no distance between them. And when we say distance, we do we are referring to real distance, which is distance on the real line. That being said, it still seems relevant to ask whether they could be considered to be different parts of the same real number. My own feeling is yes, that uh, the lower half of zero and the upper half of zero are distinct. They are, the, they are parts of the same real number, but they're different parts. And the same thing with 1. The uh, lower half of 1 could be expressed as the sum from i equals 0 to infinity of, let's make that 1 to infinity, of 9 over n, no, over 10 to the nth, while 1 can be expressed as 1 plus the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of 0 over 10 to the nth. Now ultimately, um, I find I have what some people regard as a weak argument for this, which is that basically any algorithm that can produce an infinite string of zeros is no more likely than an algorithm that can produce an infinite string of nines. Several people have argued that this number is meaningful but this number is not. That 1.0 repeating with infinite precision uh, exists as a concept. Um, and some people even argue that it exists as a, as a real measurement, that things that uh, continuous variables are measured with that kind of precision, which, which is not accurate. But anyway, um, then there's, uh, on this side, we've got 0.9 repeating equals this. And this number with infinite precision with uh, nines seems to me no more, uh, no stranger than this one with an infinite number of zeros. But the unusual thing is that these 0 plus if you start with, you've got a choice when you uh, try to represent the exact continuous number 1. You can start with the 0 digit and then end up with a continuous string of 9's, or you can start with the 1 and end up with the repeating stream of zeros. Now, can they said to be equal, though? I think the strongest num argument that really came up came from arithmetic the 1 is equal to 1 ninth times 9, which is equal to 0 0.1 repeating times 9, which is equal to 0 0.9 repeating. And so following that stream down the line, you get equals, equals, equals. And so these two things should be equal according to the laws of arithmetic. However, if we use the number 1 ninth, um, it has a repeated decimal expression, 0 0.1 repeating, but it does not seem to have a non-repeating decimal fraction. So there's no non-repeating expression of 1 ninth in base 10. But base 10 is a completely arbitrary construction. In base 3, um, 1 ninth is equal to uh, 1 or 0 over 3 
plus 1 over 3 squared plus 0 over, well, after that you got an infinite stream of zeros. So from the third digit on you would have an uh, infinite stream of zeros. But it has a dual representation in base 3. If we chose, instead of picking 1, chose 0 here, we would have the sum from i equals 3 to infinity of 2 over 3 to the i. Now my feeling is that these two uh, representations of 1 ninth, actually they represent the same real number, but they do actually represent it in a different way. This 1 ninth really represents the right side of 1 ninth, whereas this side, this 1 ninth, represents the left side. So if you were doing a problem where you had a discontinuity in your function at 1 ninth, the most familiar one would be x over, or 1 over x minus 1 ninth, for instance. And the limit as x approaches 1 ninth from the right is going to be equal to positive infinity, but the limit as x approaches 1 ninth from the left is going to be negative infinity. Now common convention in mathematics says you cannot say that x equals um, 1 ninth. You can't say x equals 1 ninth here and you can't get negative infinity. You can't say x equals 1 ninth here and you can't get positive infinity. So um, the convention is x e is not equal to 1 ninth and limit is not equal to positive infinity. So I think that brings us back to the question that Selakanth asked whether positive 0 and negative 0 are the same number. I think that this version of 1 ninth, starting with 1, third, 1 ninth and having an infinite string of zeros afterwards, would be basically considered 1 plus, or 1 ninth plus, plus the positive side of 0. And this one, where we actually put a 0 in this place and then just have a string of 227 plus 281 plus 2. 243rds would be considered 1 ninth m minus 0, or plus 0 to the left. Now, I'm not invoking an infinite number of hyperreal numbers uh, around 0, or that cannot be distinguished from 0, but I am saying that 0 has exactly two parts to it in, on the real line that all, um, all expressions that end in an infinite string of zeros are just are the right side of the number, and all expressions that start with a zero and have a continuing expressions of non-zero terms are uh, to the left side of the number. It's the same real number, but you have two sides to every number. So here's the plot of 1 over x, and we would say 1 over 0 to the left is equal to, actually let's just call it 1 over negative 0, is equal to negative infinity, and 1 over positive 0 equals positive infinity. Now, Part of the problem with this is I just about have to define positive 0 and minus 0 kind of circularly. Positive 0 is 1, uh, one minus 0 0.9 repeating, for instance. This is just one expression of it. But I think for any base n, for any n base n, uh, 0, positive 0 could be expressed as 1 minus the sum of n minus 1 over n to the i. 
So for base 2, for instance, let's make it n greater than 1. So for base 2, it would be 1 minus 1 half minus 1 fourth minus 1 eighth, 1, 1 eighth minus 1 sixteenth, etc. Dot, dot, dot. And negative 0 would be equal to just the opposite of this. It would be 0 0.9 bar minus 1, or more generally, negative 1 plus the sum i equals 1 to infinity of n minus 1 over n to the i, where n is any integer greater than 1. Now Roy Tomes has already made the basic point that I'm making. The 1 divided by 0 is infinity, but 1 divided by negative 0 is a negative infinity, and yeah, 1 divided by positive 0 is infinity. So if 0 equals negative 0, then infinity equals negative infinity. The general workaround that they use um, in conventional mathematics is to say, uh, don't think of it that way. Um, we're just going to remove 0 from the domain of this equation. Remove 0 from the domain, then you don't have to worry about the fact that uh, it approaches opposite directions um, on both sides. And for just about any, almost any intents and purposes that I could imagine, it's a legitimate thing to do, just remove 0 from the domain. But, but to me, it doesn't seem to take anything away from it to adopt the view that positive 0 and negative 0 really are distinct parts of the, of the real number. That real numbers in general have a left hand and right hand side, which is frequently in, invoked in limit notation, where we say something like x approaches 1 ninth from the right and x approaches 1 ninth from the left although it's not specifically invoked since we're just approaching from the left and right. But you can imagine another way of looking at it is if you have a door, you can approach it from the left or you can approach it from the right. This is the same door, but it does have a left-hand side and a right-hand side, and those are different faces of the same door. David E. Seaton says that the IEEE standards have actually handled have actually invoked a positive zero and a negative zero into their programming languages, which I think includes just about every programming language that we know. Selacanth says that once you add in an infinity, you no longer have a field. But we don't have to have infinity to um, make this an important argument. The unit step function, for instance, is defined as zero, where t is less than zero, or uh, one, where t is greater than 0. It looks something like this, where t equals 0 right here. And it jumps up from 0 to 1 at that time. But at t equals 0, it's basically undefined. But using this construction of, uh, of positive 0 and negative 0, we could just say, that it's 0 for t is less than or equal to negative 0, and 1 at t greater than or equal to positive 0. Felicanth goes on to say that the real numbers are the unique, totally ordered, complete field. Add something like infinity that is not a real number, and you must lose at least one of those properties. So I think that's a a strange claim to claim that the extended real number line includes distinct points positive infinity and negative infinity, but it does not have distinct plus zero and minus zero elements. To claim to, that these two points are distinct, but these two are not, seems like they should have a reason for insisting on that. I'm not sure if there's any other reason that they have for insisting on that other than they have defined it to be so. It says here, the expression 1 over 0 is not defined as either positive infinity or negative infinity. And what they do is what I mentioned before. They say basically it is not true that 1 over f of x must t 
tend to one of these points. So basically they're saying it doesn't have to, so it does not. So you just make a decision never to define a function f of x, uh, define the 1 over f of x so that x actually extends to its discontinuity. Um, here's an example of one where you really can't extend it to x equals 0. Actually, I think that's a typo. They probably have, mean to say f of x equals sine 1 over x. Because as it is, isn't that just the uh, the sinc function? That's not problematic. Sine 1 over x is interesting because it tends toward an infinite frequency as you get closer and closer to 0. Here it is zoomed in a little further. I didn't bother to plot beyond 0 0.1 because it just gets infinitely dense through there. But the existence of functions that really do become undefined as the limit goes to 0, or the limit goes to, uh, yeah, 1 over 0 would be infinity. And there's really no difference in taking the sine of infinity and the sine of negative infinity. They're both, they're both quite impossible. There are also functions where we should acknowledge that if this function really does unambiguously approach uh, 1 from the right and unambiguously approach 0 from the left. And of course, this one unambiguously approaches positive infinity from the right and it unambiguously approaches negative infinity from the left. So there, the fact that there do exist some functions where you really do have an undefined output at 0 does not prevent us from being uh, unambiguous when the function does approach an unambiguous value at 0. I see Atomic S agrees with me. Caveman does not agree with me. Atomic S asks a question that got me started writing this video, but I got it started um, wondering about the question of, uh, or more, just started ask, thinking about the question of whether 0 was equal to negative 0, that I didn't get to it. Um, and this video is already almost 18 minutes long, so I think I'm going to stop here and save that for another video. By the way, this plot isn't what was asked about here, I don't think. Well, no, it might be. Um, r e to the i natural log r. I'll probably have to do some algebra to figure out what that question means. This is just the graph, um, superimposed graph of the real part and the imaginary part of the reciprocal of a complex number.